Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining today's EAC webinar. My name is Jessica Mogelson, and I'm the marketing coordinator here at EAC. Today, we will be talking about how you can enable effective change management across your product lifecycle using PTC Windchip. We will begin today's session with an introduction of EAC, and then Bill Schlund, our technical account manager, will be taking over. The session will be recorded. Unless there is any technical difficulties, everyone will receive a replay after the webinar. Please feel free to drop questions in the chat and we will answer them after the presentation. I do see some familiar names, but for those of you who don't know who we are, I'll start off with a quick introduction of EAC. Our mission is to transform the way companies design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. Our goal is to help companies bring their products to market with the right tools and resources to be successful. We have a range of products and services that we sell, including CAD, product lifecycle and service lifecycle management software, as well as the Form 2 desktop 3D printer. We implement the Internet of Things and augmented reality into business strategies, offer help with design and engineering pro projects, and we offer training courses and webinars for continuous learning. We've partnered with PTC to deliver WindChill as today's leading industry PLM software. And we are specifically focusing on the aspects of change management today. With that, I'll pass it on to Bill to discuss how you can quickly and easily integrate change management processes with the help of PTC Windchill. Thanks, Jessica. I will share my screen with everybody. Uh, good morning. My name, as Jessica mentioned, is Bill Schlund. I'll be going through a presentation today talking about change management uh, in a or in PDM link. I wanted to go through just a couple of slides to kind of set a baseline. Um, so we're all starting from the same point. And then we'll spend the majority of the time uh, working with the software. So first of all, um, a nice quote, there is no engineering of successful systems without any changes. They are the rule, not the exception in product development. Uh, there was a survey given to management and um, this is the results. Basically, about 90% of surveyed managers say the reason they use, would want to use change management is to improve uh, user efficiency, uh, followed by about two-thirds of them saying they wanted to improve engineering decisions. About half of them said they wanted to reduce the number of changes. And then everybody else, is, all the other ones that we see here, probably about one in three uh, would rate those as, as being important. So basically, uh, it's really important for people to use change management to improve efficiency, uh, reduce changes, and um, improve engineering decisions. So that's kind of what we get from this type of uh, a process. One of the things I wanted to talk about PDM Link is it's based on CM2. So the first thing you're going to ask is, what is CM2? CM2 is uh, industry standard. Uh, that brings all configuration management activities under one umbrella to help accommodate change, uh, keep documented requirements clear, <clears throat> and ensure uh, configurations conform to the requirements. So this is a standard upon which PDM Link uh, change management is based. So there's a couple different ways that we go through change management in our windshield system. Uh, there is a kind of a fast track, there's a full fully involved change management path, and then there's just a real quick basic path. Um, the fast track and the full version, it's used kind of like the 80-20 rule, right? You probably want about 80% of your changes to go in the fast track, and then the 20% maybe a more fully uh, involved kind of a process in change management. So let's kind of take a look at an out-of-the-box change management process uh, that we get in PDM Link. Uh, the first one, is we would start out with a problem report. Uh, then that would be reviewed to make sure that it's valid. That would go then to a change request. Again, at the end of the change request, that would be reviewed. Finally, that goes to a change notice. And uh, from the change notice after being reviewed, uh, the tasks would be uh, delivered and the changes would be enacted. So this is an out-of-the-box uh, process. Now you might hear ECRs and ECOs. It, you can use any words you want and you can define these any way you want. But basically, in our discussion today, we'll be using uh, this type of terminology. So as I mentioned before, there's kind of a full track and a fast track. 
we're doing change management, the fast track, like I said, I alluded to earlier, probably about 80% you'd want to do that. Full track would maybe be something that involves more people, uh, might involve some other uh, groups, and also might include maybe testing or getting input from other uh, places that typically wouldn't uh, take place in a uh, fast track change scenario. So um, both of those are defined and uh, you can choose when you create a change, uh, which one, which path you want to take. And I'm gonna do a search. Uh, so <clears throat> basically I'm gonna run through a scenario where uh, we need to make a change to a product. And where that need for change, it could be coming from a customer request, it could be uh, internal investigations that we find out, it could be a variety of different resources. But basically what I've found out is that something needs to be changed in order to uh, resolve the situation. So I'm gonna do a search, let's search for CAD documents and I'm going to search for something uh, with the word fan in it. I'll say, let's search for that. So here it lists out all the different CAD products that we have uh, with the word fan. And here's the main fan. So basically what I'm doing is I want to look and find the product uh, that has the issue and then kind of use some of that information to help document uh, and justify the change uh, that I'm going to request. So I'm just gonna hit the little information button here. And this brings me to that particular product. If we look under its content, we can see that we have the, the product here. It's a, in this case, a Creo assembly. And uh, this is the thing that we want to, we're having issues with, this is where we wanna fix it. So I'm just gonna select on the little image down here. What that's gonna do is just bring me into Creo view. And with Creo view, I'm gonna be able to uh, find the component of interest and uh, maybe use uh, this product to help kind of mark up uh, what changes might need to be made. So first of all, let's just grab our uh, our back. So this is like a little fan assembly that you might find in a uh, computer or some other small electronic um, component. Uh, the interest that we have and the, and the problem that we have is with this fan here. Uh, when it's running, it makes too much noise. And uh, what I want to do is kind of use the capabilities in Creo View to just mark this up to indicate that, you know, this is our, our component of interest. Um, I'm gonna go in and say, let's maybe make a little note on this guy. And we'll say, I don't know, fan makes too much noise. All right. And that's all I know. That's the only feedback I've gotten from anybody is that makes a lot of noise. So we'll make the text maybe a little bit bigger. So as you can see, we've got you know our 3D markup of our fan. This is what I'm gonna to use to kind of help leverage this information and this image in my uh, request for a change. So what I'm gonna do is just come over here and I don't even have to say save it as an annotation. If I tried to exit out and say, you have an annotation set, you wanna save it. I'm just gonna say, yeah, we'll give it a name and we'll just call it, uh, fan fan noise that's the name of this um, i can put in my telephone number put in some comments and i'll say okay let's save that into pdm link so we'll exit out from creo view and what we can see is that our markup has been added here you notice there's a little red pen indicating back to me as a user that there is a markup so if i were to include this in any documentation um, it would have a hyperlink they would click on it as so and what they would see would be this, exactly what I want them to see. So let's uh, let's go back. Now I like this markup that I have, so I'm gonna select it. I'm just gonna say, let's copy it. So what it does just copies it onto a clipboard for me so that I can use it at some future point. So this is the issue that we have, it's a noisy fan. So I'm gonna come over here and say, I want to create a new problem report. And remember we create a problem report, and then a change request and a change notice. So this is kind of our first step in our out of the box scenario. We'll create our new problem report. A nice window pops up for me here. And we can say, um, what's the name of this problem report? And again, we could just say, call it maybe noisy fan. Um, requester, I could put my name in it. What's the reason for this? Is it a customer complaint? Is it uh, 
documentation, quality. I'm going to say it's a design issue. And, you know, it's out there in the field making a whirring noise, driving people nuts. So I'm going to say it's kind of a high priority. I can even set a date, you know, when I need this to be, uh, be checked and fixed by. I put in a description. And I'll just go to my next tab. There aren't really any other affected items other than the fan itself. Um, and then here, you notice that it automatically attaches that fan assembly to my uh, problem report. Another thing that I'm going to do is I want to include that markup. So I just come over here and say, let's add the markup that I created earlier and add that in to help document our, our request or problem, uh, problem report. If we go to the next one, do we have any other documentation that we might want to add to help support this? So I could say, yeah, let's add another document. Um, I could either grab a document that's internal to PDM link. Uh, I'm going to say, let's grab one that's maybe sitting on my desktop. And uh, let's see, here's some fan info documentation. This could be customer feedback or you know maybe some uh, noise uh, analysis that we've done talking about the decibels that's being released by this. But now that we've finished that, we're just going to say, that's it. We finished our problem report. And what this is going to do is say, you can either submit that now, right, into the process and start it going, or I could submit it later. And all that's going to do is just sit on my uh, task uh, listing and say, you know, when are you going to submit this thing? So I'm just going to say, we'll submit it now. So what this does is it kicks off the change management process with a uh, problem report. Uh, what happens is I'm going to go to the manager who gets this, and it shows up under his task, and it says, analyze a problem report. Here's the problem report that we created. So I'm going to select on this. So this starts the process. And in this case, we're analyzing it. So we want to verify that this is a valid problem uh, report. So there's a nice little widget here to help us go through this. But um, <clears throat> if I go and say, let's take a look at our problem report, we can kind of look at it a little bit more in depth. Here we're seeing the process of this. And where we're sitting right now is we're analyzing the problem report. So this is the process that we go through for a problem report. Uh, we start here, the little green flag, go through the creation of it. Um, so this is the type of uh, flow, workflow, that exists for a problem report. And finally, when it gets approved and uh, all of that, it gets to the exit part here. But um, with this, we can see that this is a, yeah, we don't really need to see that. We'll go back and say, yeah, this is a, a valid reason. Um, you know, we see the documentation, the attached information here for everything. I can, you know, pick on each one of them, open up and read them. But let's assume I did that. And now I'm going to say, yeah, um, this needs to be fixed. That'll be my comments. And I'm going to say complete the review task. So that completes the task. So then what this does is now that we have uh, an official problem that's been uh, reviewed, we can go over here. And if we look under issues, we can see that our noisy fan here is now an official issue to be worked with. So I'm just going to select on this. Everything's a hyperlink, right? It brings us into this particular process. Um, again, I could go over here and well, in this case, we can see that we have all the documentation here. And what I want to do is take this problem report and create a change request. So we'll say, let's create a new change request. Now, again, we can give it a name. We can do all of this stuff. All that information already exists from our problem report. So all I do is click this button here and say, propagate all that information. It fills in everything for me, reattaches all the documents that I created, my markup, all the other things. I can then propose maybe a solution. To this case, um, I've looked at the problem, and I'll say uh, maybe we need to round off the fan blades to make them quieter. 
<clears throat> I can attach some more documentation, um, maybe, you know, rep or, uh, you know, some ideas that I have about rounding them off. But in this case, I'm just going to say, let's just finish that up and we'll submit that. So now we've taken a look at it. We've said, you know, we proposed a solution. Again, what this does is goes back for review. As I said, after every step um, and out of the box, we, we go through a review. Here it says, analyze the change request. Upon selecting that, we can see our change request. Um, again, we come down here and say, see where we are in the process. Our change request, we're analyzing the change request right now. So the change request is a little bit more involved as we see here. But again, we can see exactly where it is in the process. I'm gonna come over here and um, We'll just say, let's complete the review of the change request. And then if we refresh, now it says we have to create a change notice, right? So the change request has been analyzed. We go to step three, which is um, change request. Again, we can take a look at where we are in the process. Remember before we were over here when we're analyzing it, now we're down here. You can see it easily highlighted in green so we can find out exactly where we are in the process at any time. In this case, what I wanna do is um, come over here and say, let's make that change notice. Pops up the process here. Again, I'm just going to say propagate. We've got all this information that we've been collecting as it's been going through the process. Why not make use of that? Define an implementation plan. This is the important part, at least for me here, because what I'm going to do is right now it's always been involving me. And this is where I say the assignee. Who do I want to dump this work off on? And I'm just going to type in a guy's name, Dave, who's part of in the windshield system. And I'll just say, let's assign it to Dave the engineer. So what that happens is that our change notice now gets sent to Dave to be fixed, right? So he's the engineer, he's the CAD guy. He'll get in his inbox or his task, uh, take a look at this um, change request, call up the model, make the changes that I've requested, and then close out that task. And then someone will review it, and then it will be done. So that's kind of the process um, that we go through. Now, the first thing you're going to say is, well, you know, okay, great process. That's not ours, right? We have a unique process. It's totally different than anybody else. And, um, you know, I see change um, management done in a variety of ways. And it's kind of a maturity thing uh, with PDM. Like most people, first of all, get wind chill is tremendously powerful, but they start off just using it as a vault, right? You just go and you check in your parts and at least they're all, all secure and they're rev controlled and all of that great stuff. And you might do change management in a variety of different ways. You might use something like Agile to do change management. You might use exchange of emails and uh, documents and emails to do change management. Maybe you still have paper and different colored folders and things like that. That's all fine. Uh, but what we can do is take whatever process you have, digitize it, and put it into the PDM like system. And I'll just real quickly show you how that works. Uh, I'll just go over here and we'll say, let's take a look at some workflows. So everything in PDM Link has workflows. So I'll say, look at this workflow template manager. And we'll come down here and we'll say, let's look at change activity. And so there are workflows and we can create our own. That's really where I'm getting at this. Create our own workflows when we enact a change. You know, how does it work in our company? And I'll say, you know, let's let's go and take a look at that. So it looks like this for our change workflow activity. Remember, we were seeing this before. It was just showing us, highlighting in green where we were along that path. But when we create these workflows, uh, you notice it starts off, if it's brand new one, it goes, moves straight across. If it's a revision, it just gets kicked back to the originator of it so that he can fix this. And then it continues, bumps back up and continues along the path. So this is a real simple type of workflow. Uh, we can also get much more complex with it maybe something like this, all right? Uh, let's take a look at, here we have a problem report. The one that we went through 
uh, earlier. You can see we start off, we create the problem report, we analyze it, so on and so forth. Um, so how do you create something like this? This is the one that comes with change management out of the box. Um, if I wanna take a look at how we create it, I just go over here under File, and I'll say, let's create a brand new one. And our new one, I can just go over here and drag these little icons around to create the process that we want. I can define them to do anything I want. Um, here, I'm just doing some real simple things. You know, we have a start point, we have an end point, and, uh, you know, we can make it look real nice here. I'm just going to go and kind of make them all lined up. And then we create the flow. We just say, you know, go from the start to this robot. These are basically called robots. And then go to the next. Uh, we can branch off and go in different directions. So this is how we go about creating that type of a workflow. So as you can see, it doesn't matter what your process is. We can redefine it inside the change management system and have a workflow that duplicates exactly what's being done in your company. And if you want to change it, and you know, that's a good opportunity. If uh, your current change management process isn't working the best, this would be a great opportunity to change it and have that the new way of doing things going forward. So one other thing that I wanted to, to touch on is that uh, one of the things that we've been doing right now, so far all day today, is just working with um, PDM Link, right, and change management. So I wanna show you something that EAC has done. Um, I'm gonna go into and use some apps, or use an app. So these apps log into Windchill, right, but they give us a totally different interface into Windchill or into PDM Link. So we have a couple of different apps that EAC has created, some for searching, uh, quick access, getting bills of materials, pulling out different formats of different types of parts to deliver to other people. And we could do spend all, you know, a whole session just on that. But what I'm gonna do is show you this app here. And most apps, um, if you think about Navigate or any apps that any other company writes, they always pull information. Uh, so here, I'm searching for things in Windchill. It goes into windshield searches. The nice thing about this app is this is the interface, right? So I'm not having to go through the windshield interface. Everything is on a single page. So here I can see that we have this particular product. Over here I can see you know, an image of the product. I can see the drawing of the product, things like that. As I mentioned before though, everything that is in <clears throat> windshield can be accessed from this, but these apps always pull information. You notice that it's pulling in an image of this, is pulling in a drawing of that. It's giving me a bill of materials. We can also push things out. So for instance, if I come down here, um, let's find a component that maybe we can work with. Let's say the crank. So here's the crank for our engine. Again, we're seeing an image of it but I want to um, create a problem report. I just clicked here. And now this is my interface for problem report. Um, we could say, you know, I don't know what would be wrong with a crank. Oh, well, maybe it's not, um, vibration, right? Vibration found, all right. Um, what category is this? Is this cost reduction? Okay, the same list. This is, this is, PDM link, we're just getting at it in a really simple way. So, you know, we don't have all the things where we can start attaching documentation to this, but if someone needs to kick off a workflow, it goes in and uses the exact same workflows that we've used before. I can go in and put in a description and then just say, submit. Um, if I wanted to do a change request, I can just do the same thing. Give that a name. Again, another list of why we're doing this change request and then maybe even some cost, uh, propose a solution as I did before. Remember I proposed a solution before. Here it's just all on one nice, neat sheet. So it makes it very easy for us as a casual user of a PDM link system or maybe a brand new user, if we needed to enact and start to kick off a change process, we can use one of the EAC apps to do that. Really, really simple, anybody can use this. And it uses the same process that we went through uh, with uh, PDM Link before, it's just we're starting from a much easier place. 
So really those are the things that I wanted to touch upon today, going into the out of the box capabilities, and then some of the things that EAC has done to make uh, life a little bit easier for people. So with this, I'm gonna turn it back to Jessica and we're gonna open it up for questions from you guys. Thanks so much, Bill. I do actually see one question in the queue. Um, is change management an extra module we have to buy for PDM Link? Yeah, so that's great because remember when you buy PDM Link, you, you buy a really, really robust system. And change management is built into PDM, just like WT parts and everything else, it's already there. So all you have to do is access it. You know, we saw those out of the box um, workflows are already predefined, you know, CM2 standards, all of that good stuff. We can take those, uh, we can make copies of them, we can modify them, we can start from scratch like I did in that one example where we just kind of created our own. You can do that yourself or you can have EAC come in, we'll sit down with you and help create one of these workflows and uh, you know that's a time and materials thing but again there's no software that needs to be purchased it's part of windchill the way that it works so there is no extra software that you need to buy you already have it if you have pdm link you have this thank you i'm not actually seeing any other questions in the queue right now um so with that i think we'll be done taking up your time for today i want to thank everybody for joining us on the webinar we appreciate the time you took with us this morning like I said, as long as there are no technical difficulties, you will be receiving a replay of the webinar in your inbox shortly. We hope to see you on future EAC webinars. Have a great rest of the day.